During these times when the church cannot meet together physically, and we are having to find different ways to be church, it seems like a good idea to reflect on what we understand the church to be. What is the church, and why do we do church the way we normally do it? And are there ways which, when, as we trust, lockdown eventually ends, we should do it differently? So our Sunday morning teaching during the next couple of months is going to focus on some of those things. We'll be looking at aspects like communion and baptism and church leadership, as well as what it means to be a Baptist church. And this Sunday will be an introduction when we will look at some of the images and metaphors which the Bible uses to describe the church. But because we're trying to keep our sermons a bit shorter while we're online, this video is an introduction to that introduction and will hopefully get you thinking a little bit about what we're going to be thinking about on Sunday. In the New Testament, the word church is used either to signify the entire body of Christ's people throughout time and space, what we mean by the word Catholic when we say in the Apostles' Creed, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the whole church. Or secondly, it can mean a particular congregation of Christians. For example, there are various places in Paul's letters where he refers to the church which meets in so-and-so's house. Interestingly, though, what church never means in the New Testament is a building, is the actual place where the church meets. In Paul's day, the concept that there might have been several churches in a town or district which each operated independently to one another, uh, with each having pra different practices and even beliefs, would have seemed distinctly odd and perhaps even troubling. And although that's the reality we live in today, it's good to keep challenging ourselves about that and to work for unity between the churches as well as within our own church. And later that this month, we're organising a prayer initiative across the local churches. And I hope that you'll engage with that for all sorts of reasons, but including because it's a sign of church unity and therefore we believe it brings delight to God's heart. 1 Corinthians 12 tells us quite a bit about what church should look like and contains one of the most remarkable statements in the Bible. You, plural, i.e. the church, you are the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27. Not just you the church are a picture or a symbol of the body of Christ, but you are the body of Christ. It's all the more remarkable because the particular church to which this statement was addressed, the church in Corinth, was surely one of the least Christ-like churches that Paul had ever written to. So if he could say it to them, he could certainly say it to our church. You are the body of Christ. So what does it mean to be the body of Christ? Well, you might want to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's an interesting chapter. Early in it, there's a contrast between the words different and same. At least if you're using the NIV, that's how they're translated. Different gifts, charisma, but the same spirit. Different kinds of service. Service is the word we get from which we get the word deacon but the same Lord. Different kinds of working, it's the word from which we get our word energy, but the same God. So there is one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, but multiple ways in which he is served. And also earlier in that chapter, we see another comparison between one and many. One body, but many parts. One spirit, but many types of people, Jews, Gentiles, slaves, free, etc. So the church is a collection of people who are united in Christ and in being filled with the Holy Spirit, but who are diverse in almost every other conceivable way. Unity, therefore, but not uniformity, is what we see. One God and one identity 
but diversity of people, diversity of gifts and ways of serving, reflecting the fact that God is also both one and three. And let's reflect briefly on those two aspects, those two poles, we might say, which somehow, as the body of Christ, we need to hold together. Firstly, there is the sense in which we are to be the same. We are to be united. We are to be one. And how might that challenge us? Well, the context into which Paul was writing was that the Corinthians were not very good at being one. They had issues with selfishness, for example, the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. They had issues with disunity and having their own heroes, Paul, Apollos, Cephas, etc., in chapters 1 and 3. They had issues with individualism, obsession with speaking in tongues as an act of individual worship, chapter 14. There were issues with lawsuits among within the church and individual rights in chapter 6. A church which is united as the body of Christ needs to look different to that. Church is not about me. It's not about what I can get out of it. It's not even primarily about my personal relationship with God. It's not about finding a place where they sing my favourite songs or where I can network with my friends or exercise my ministry. Unity means suppressing the me instinct in each of us and focusing on Christ, which means prioritising the body of Christ. Remember how in chapter one, the super spiritual party said, I follow Christ. And of course, we should all follow Christ, for there's no true unity apart from Christ. But Paul was not impressed with this impressive sounding statement I appeal to you to agree, to be united, to get rid of divisions, he said. So unity is something we need to work at. But what's second, what secondly about the other pole, diversity? Imagine someone coming to our church and saying, because I am not blank, I do not belong here. What word or words could be inserted in that blank, which would make it a phrase that could legitimately be said by a visitor to our church. Because I am not married, because I don't have children and grandchildren, because I'm not an extrovert, because I'm not secure in my face, because I'm not literate, because I haven't been here for years, etc., etc., because of those things, I don't belong to this church. I don't belong here. But a church that is not uniform, but sorry, a church that is uniform is not a church. And if you think that's controversial, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in which Paul says in the bulk of the passage, using the analogy of the body, that actually we need to be different. Where would a body be if every part were a foot? I do actually think that one of the strengths of Hayward's Heath Baptist Church is that we're not uniform and we don't try to squeeze people into an HHBC shaped mould. I hope that we also recognise that all gifts are valuable and we don't put certain gifts and roles on pedestals. But these are almost certainly things that we need to keep working on. And it's important that as well as people with more obvious gifts, we need to value for example, the person who can put people at their ease. The naturally shy person who notices when someone else is on the edge of things and summons up the courage to draw them in. The peacemaker who pours oil on troubled waters. The person who, calls to, who, calls, who feels called to pray for the minister's family every single day. And I know there are some people like that. The person who is willing to clean and tidy up after everyone else. And the person who's learnt to be content with not being able to do very much because of their current health or personal circumstances, but who is nevertheless part of the body of Christ, chosen and valued and loved. I hope you feel you have a place here a place where you can grow and flourish and serve. 
And I pray that over the coming weeks, God will help us to work out together what it means to be church.